Podcast. We are here today in this beautiful uh, venue, Riedehusen, such a historic place. I remember coming here as a child, seeing uh, amazing music, concerts. Um, so it is just uh, amazing to uh, to be able to come here today and to have the the podcast here today. Today at Embassy Podcast, we are talking with Emil Bra, who is a Hello. local. Hello. <laughs> How are you, man? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you. That's uh, great. It's great to have you here today uh, at the Embassy Podcast. Um, Emil has been working a lot, uh, creating uh, sound design uh, and music and composition. He's coming from a, a very eclectic background, I will say, of experimental music, stretching free jazz, stretching drone, ambient noise. And, and, and today we are also going to be talking about storytelling yeah. and how to, um, to make sound design yeah. in terms of uh, uh, scoring for storytelling, because you, yes. you also put... So with this in mind, I, I'm very happy to have you here. And, um, and we are going to start out by listening to a track of yours, Emil. Yeah. Uh, the name of the track is uh, Duden from Lübeck. That's actually the, the band name. Oh, that's the band name? Yeah, no. that's the band name. Wow. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Anyways, um, I'm glad to have uh, everybody here in the audience. And here is the track Duden from uh, Lübeck. Let's uh, take a listen. Oh, my God. 
Emil, kan du tælle a little bit more about this band, Døden from Lübeck? Ja, yeah, um, it was, uh, I always wanted to be a musician when I was a kid. Ja. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, but I didn't know how to play an instrument. Right, right. Uh, so, so it was a, a bit like uh, drawing a lot of covers, doing a lot of, uh, doing a lot of band names and track names and and all that stuff to 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 imagine I was a musician. And and then when I started playing music, we played more heavy metal and noise rock and and that kind of stuff. But this track we just heard now is from 2003, and that was when I started with my friend Tor, who's a part of the band. We uh, we wanted to experiment with taking sounds like, for example, a flute or or chimes or whatever. Take some sounds and then distort them and and affect them and and process them completely uh, crazy. So so you would not be able to hear what the sound was cost what you know, what this what the what the sound originally was. Yeah. So yeah. that so many ways. This track was my first intro, was my first attempt of making more sound design or, or making more um, m- music uh, I, d- i don't know make more kind of abstract music yeah yeah exactly yeah so so that's yeah. how the I, band started to make more to make more kind of a take on pop or drone or ambient music that also had some some weirdness in it Right, right. Uh, I was not so old at the time, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's still, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I remember you saying something about being very young when starting out this, uh, this project. Um, yeah. Yeah. And 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 how was it then to start to go from from actually playing in bands, playing uh, these uh, genres of of, uh, of 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 drone, like like where we where we. Uh, ex- experimental and also yeah. very, very expressive uh, genres of music and, and how then was the journey then going into more of a sign, sound design kind of like uh, well, uh, yeah well I think I think that I started studying film in an early age uh, and, and has been completely obsessed by uh, by movies and, and especially surrealist movies and art movies and art house and, and all that kind of stuff So I think at some point I, I needed soundtracks for the small experiments I was working with in film. And I started doing my own soundtracks. And and that, I think, led also to the point of, of thinking about music as telling a story. Yeah. Uh, you know, like um, if, if, if you have a certain scene that needs a certain atmosphere in it via the music, mm-hmm. then, you need to, then you need to unwrap that atmosphere in the music. Right, right, yeah. So I think the movies led into more sound collage sound design stuff. Yeah. Uh, back in, I think that was also in the start of the 2000s or something. Okay, okay. When yeah. I started. Uh, and then I also had some some bands and some projects I had that uh, eventually led into being more sound design based. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool, amazing. So I also want to touch Emil because you just uh, released a new um, uh, podcast show, or should I call it uh, radio play? Yeah, it's more of a radio. I think it's more yeah, of a radio yeah. than it's a podcast, but I don't know quite what the difference is. It, it, but the name is So God Radio, which yeah. translates to Sleep Well Radio. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, and in this Sleep Well Radio, I, I listened to a few episodes. I, I thought. It was an amazing way of basically conveying storytelling and, and, and making sound design that just, I don't know, it felt very, very, to me it felt uh, like, like the sound design created for this, uh, this show yeah. uh, felt very alive. Like yeah, it, yeah. Was, uh, it, was, uh, it was not f- sounding so fabricated, but it sounded more like a, a live expression of musical rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can you tell a little bit about what was uh, the idea behind uh, the Sleep Well Radio and, and, and how really did you came to think about the, the, the ide- ideation of, of creating yeah, this, yeah. Uh, this script that you, you wrote and, and also well, the, the, the sound design? Yeah, well, I think that in... Um, I think I, I've had a lot of problems sleeping in my life, you know. I suffer a lot from insomnia. And then sometimes I'm more kind of... I, th- I think... 
I wanted to, you know, because I, then I listen a lot to music while I try to sleep, and I just wanted some music or, or some that was just so relaxing and so so comforting that I could fall asleep without listening to sounds of the rainforest or something, but more right. also something that had a integrity and and something that 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 had a narrative. So if I could sleep, it would be nice to sleep to. But if I couldn't sleep, it would be nice to listen to. Yeah. Also for other people who would su- who would suffer from insomnia or just wanted something a bit funny, uh, relaxing, listen to before they go to sleep. Mm-hmm. So the the idea came from that, and then I made I made it to I, I have a little uh, company called Trojan Mule, which I have together with my friend Ida, and we decided to do this sleep radio. I pitched it for her, and she thought it sounded like a great idea. And then it was so I knew I wanted to do an eight-hour-long radio program. So so you could put it on before you go to sleep, and you could listen to it for eight hours while in your sleep. You know, so you just have some subconscious, subconscious uh, messages, basically, or atmospheres in your mind. So if you wake up, ah, I need you wake up. You need to take a piss. Or you wake up. You need to drink some water, or whatever. Then there would just be some nice cool stuff going on, you know. Yeah. So that was the original idea, but then we found out it didn't work. Because it's a lot of work to do eight hour radio for a person who's sleeping. It, it right. would also be, seem a bit pointless. Um, so we divided it into half an hour episodes. And then it is it is basically just, it is a lot about the sound design because it's, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's all about triggering the senses. Because when you listen to radio or, or whatever, you, you you cannot smell what's coming out of the radio. You know, you cannot see what the guy is talking about. Or you can, you know, it it, it it it's all about planting a little seed in the listener's mind yeah. that will that will eventually, hopefully, give these associations that we thought of. And if it didn't, it's also cool. You know, it's a bit. It it is a sleep radio, so it's also about the realm of dreams. You know. Yeah. So it's all about making a dreamlike atmosphere that people can enjoy while try to sleep or not. Right. It's such a to me it is an amazing idea this idea of curating basically the subconscious level that yeah. you are experiencing this subconscious experience when your brain is is going through this delta brainwave phase. Where <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we talked about it. Um but um so so it in a way it, it kind of like your brain when you are on the brink of sleep it yeah. your, your your conscious it goes into a, a lower uh, lower gear where where things they 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 start to manifest things in, appear in another way yeah yeah, yeah. and so. that was always the idea you know because i'm i'm so, uh, like in all levels of my work i'm interested in uh, in that that specific place which exists just you have you have you are awake And then you have a lot of ideas and you have a lot of things going on in your daily life. And you sleep and you are no longer in control. It is something else taking over when you sleep that you don't control. And, and, and that little gateway, that teeny weeny little portal in between being awake and sleeping, that has always fascin- fascinating me, uh, fascinated me a lot because um, I think there's something, I don't something, there's something exotic about it, you know. Like like you you are halfway in reality, but on the other hand, you are the the reality starts to dissolve away, uh, and you're left with all these weird impressions and ideas and and atmospheres that that you don't get while being awake, and yeah. and that is of course a paradox to try to to explain that while I'm I'm writing the script while I'm awake, of course, so it's, it's a bit of paradox to write that, but then it's all about doing a lot of research, sleeping a lot. Sleeping a lot. Sleeping a lot and getting into that subconscious level and then try to pull out some of it. The best kind of research. But how then do you plan ahead of, of creating these journeys through sleep? Are you planning like you, you would see like an original uh, composer scoring for a radio show, for a movie show? In this idea that, that you write everything in in uh, in themes and you kind of like balance the the, the scales, you balance yeah. the, the the keys in order to to create a, a structured narrative. Or how do you go about really your your process in, in doing this? Well, uh, I think the first thing is getting the idea. 
you know, having the idea. I I want to do a sleep radio. That's the first step, you know, and you have that idea. And then I think it's in some way or another it's important to to sleep on it. You know, because then if you have if you have the idea, it's it's it, it's a bit like having a having a little trap. You know, right. the idea is the little trap that you take with you into sleep. And then when you sleep and when you dream and, and all that stuff, then something will bite on the bait, you know, hopefully. Or else you just wait one more night or whatever. And, <laughs> you know, the, the, because then I think that the dream, the dream state kind of puts meat on the bone, you know. Yeah. You dream something, you get an idea, and you, you have the idea and the dream becomes entangled with, with the dreams. And uh, in, in some ways, and other times, I, I, I just write. You know, automatic writing. I've been a huge fan of automatic writing all my life, you know, so I can always just sit down and say, for the next 20 minutes, I'm going to write without looking at it. Right. And then just write, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah. And then you can go back and edit it and all that stuff. So it's a, it's a different approach to whatever, uh, you know, to whatever you want the idea to be. And in the sleep radio, uh, for example, I remember Ida, whom I'm doing the, the show with, she said, um, we were sitting having a bonfire down in our studio outside. And she said like, ah, oh, it's crazy how a bonfire sounds like a vinyl crackle. Yeah. And that really just kind of like sparked something in my mind, like to, to how, you would sen how, how you would sense something. Like, like how, how sounds are one thing and become another thing, you know? You know, yeah, so, so yeah. just like, like, like l having, the, having the reality become a version of itself or, or, or a different version of itself. I guess it's also about how the brain really interacts with the sound design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like uh, when, when, when you talk about this, example of the the bonfire sounding like a, a, a vinyl crackle yeah yeah um it it comes a lot down to basically how normal uh foley artist uh, yeah, works yeah, yeah, in, yeah in basically manipulating sound in a way that that the the brain kind of like experiences is at, at, at as real experiences yeah 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 um so so it, it is interesting <laughs> that that they were for the yeah trigger, i mean i way. mean i mean foley as in movies where you have a Foley in movies where, where you have some guy, a Foley artist who, who has uh, shoes. I met this Foley artist. He had uh, he had a pair of high heels on his hands, and with that pair of high heels, he could walk like 20 people in high heels. <laughs> really? <laughs> just just by by moving his feet, he could make it sound like up to 20 people's walking. Wow! Wow! Yeah. You know, so, 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 but, but 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 Foley artists are amazing. It's they, they have a huge talent in developing. You know something that use that 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 is the meaning. It should sound like something, but it's not. Like whenever you hear airplane in an old movie, it's a Neil Fisk vacuum cleaner. Really, it's a vacuum cleaner. It's a vacuum cleaner. The, the, the sound of the airplane in movies. In the olden days, <laughs> Neil Fisk. In the olden days, you would always use a Neil Fisk vacuum cleaner to make the sound of an airplane taking off. Wow. I heard from this Foley yeah. artist. I don't know if it's true, but at least yeah. I heard it. Okay, that's, that's so. I think the foley is is is, is also, you know, something. You use something that is not the thing you want it to be, but it's emulating. It's emulating uh, yeah. it's reality. All, it's all about reception, really. Yeah, right? yeah. How, how does the human like mind how, how hear does it the, the brain, the, the yeah, ears yeah, yeah. interpret the sounds? Yeah, yeah. And I guess this is also how you you work with the subconsciousness of, of sleep. Yeah, in yeah, a way, yeah. Because it, it changes. What it changes is it changes the reception really, yeah. of, of the of the of the ideas, yeah. the sounds, of yeah. the soundscapes. So, um, yeah, it changes the soundscapes. I guess you know, like like like. I think it's it's not that I'm saying I'm being directly inspired. You know, it's not like dreams are dictating my ideas, but I think that dreams and and sleep in general is a nice way to get some meat on the bone. You know, because you will have some. You know, you know, the, the, you dream something and then you say like, yeah, I dreamed about you last night, but you weren't really you. It was like you were somebody else, 
And this dream logic is very fascinating to me. I mean, it's 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 fascinating, yeah. the dream logic. And if you can tr if you can take the dream logic and put it into a radio program, then which is what we try to do. Yeah. If you if you can manage to get that dream logic into and 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 people will listen and just be ready for that the scene is shifting all the time and things are running at a bit weird pace and all that then you have done something you know because everybody sleeps and everybody dreams basically you know so everybody knows this feeling and that is the hidden the hidden quality of it is that everybody knows this feeling of reality slipping away in dreams yeah and that is what i want to manifest or what we wanted to manifest in the in the in the sleep podcast yeah and also in in the entirety of my other work i do you yeah. know it's in because sound design and all that stuff while we're talking about sound design I want to play this next track with uh, sound design of a bird. Of a bird? Of a bird. Which it's bird? Called, it's called the Rødkalk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What it, is it called? There's actually no sound of that bird. But no. I, we just called the track that. It's all fabricated sound. It's all fabricated sound. <laughs> okay. but, the, but the important thing about that, uh, I think, why we chose that track to play now, is that it's actually it's done by a vast amount of James. Yeah, uh, we ha uh, I have a studio somewhere, and and we had a summer of the jam, where we would jam every single night, every single day, every single morning. We would just jam, and all these jams got recorded. And then what I did on this track was that I just I uh, I edit only one second or less, maximum one second or less than one second, together of loops. So I had all these small chunks, I would put together, and try to make a composition. How do we make a composition of? of only one second loops. So that was what yeah. I tried to do. But yeah. textures. Of textures, yeah, yeah. A collage. Yeah. Collage music. Collage music, yeah. Okay. So next track we're gonna hear is called Rødkilk Emulator.
Yes. Okay, yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. So I, I, um, I get a feeling that you can feel the, how, how really music like this is, is, is put together as essentially sound collages. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and also um, it is music that is being created in, in a very spontaneous manner, as I understand it, right? Can you tell a little Well, more? I would say that this track has nothing spontaneous about it because uh, all the jams were spontaneous, you know. But, but when I made this, it was like, like I worked with one to below one second of samples. So that doesn't leave much to the, you know, like every, I have to think everything because, you know, you know, you have, then you have maybe uh, 10,000 samples lying from a uh, uh, year of James. And then you put them together and slice them in. And, you know, so, so it wasn't so spontaneous. It was a, a cold, calculated effort. Cold and calculated. Cold okay. and calculated. <laughs> but, but then I would say that, that, that all the James have been spontaneous. So I think the spontaneous vibe comes in through the track. Uh, I hope so, at least, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I also want to touch down on uh, this collective that you are part of. Yeah. Um, and and uh, some of the stuff you've been doing, because I've been there many times. I, I love the place, I love the music, I love the people, most of all. Um, so, so how really, what can you tell me about Cosmos Solo? Well, like um, Cosmos Solo was, uh, a, I think, first of all, Cosmos Solo was uh, my friend, my dear friend Eske, whom I've known since childhood. And, and uh, he had this idea of making a band called uh, Cosmos Solo or something. Uh, he had some ideas. So he had the name. And he already had a band camp, I remember, but mm -hmm. there was nothing on it. And then when we started making music together again around 2016, uh, the year of the jam, Then, um, then we talked about making this band called Cosmo Solo, which was about... Uh, the point of it was to make so many jams and make so many releases that nobody would know what was going on. Like, like you would lose... You would lose... Uh, you, would, you, you didn't know what was going on. Then maybe we would use one track that we released sometime and, and put it in a new atmosphere and... So the so idea was just to build an archive of jams and sounds and, uh, and, and then just use the hell out of that in different contexts all the time. That was the original idea, but then around 2019 we started a label, a record label for experimental music and drone and free jazz mm. and sound art. Yeah. Uh, so Cosmo Solo became a label that me and Eske are running. Um, and, and mainly, of course, to, to, to put out our own stuff. But, but, we have, but down, I have a studio down on the Sydhavn in Aarhus, down on the, yeah. the slaughterhouse ground. And there are so many talented musicians and good friends down there. So Cosmo Solo has also become kind of a collective where everybody just jam along and play along and we're all featured on each other's records and we're all producing each other's records and we're all making covers for each other's records and all that, right? Yeah. So, so it's, a bit like, it's a bit like a huge mess, basically, which was the original idea for Cosmo Solo, that it should be a huge mess. Like nobody knows where the original files come from, nobody knows what the... Um, and that kind of... Yeah, that, that is an approach I like also in sound design, is that, that, that you take different elements of different jams and you put it together to a new jam. So if you can have, if you, for example, if you have a lot, then you have a sample of, for example, Eske playing contrabass in a, in a jazz session. And then on the other hand, you have Andrew playing death metal guitar in another session. And how do you mix those two to give it a completely third song, a third session? That's what I'm really interested in. And that, that, that's not to do with Cosmo Solo, is to have the archive and then just... Yeah. Uh, reassemble, resample, you know, everything. Right, right. That, that was kind of our, our idea about uh, Cosmos Solo and the community around that. Yeah, amazing. It's, it's also a thing I get very much that Cosmos Solo as a studio and yeah. a collective is a place where music happens spontaneously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And everything is archived. Everything is recorded. Yeah, yeah, everything is recorded. And everything is then put together through meticulously uh, storytelling, planning. Not everything. <laughs> you would be surprised. I mean, I think, I think, like you know, we have, because on our list to uh, albums to be released on Cosmo Solo, I think we, I don't know. We are we are running about 20 albums or something yeah. that that is done. <laughs> you know, that's albums that are done and haven't been released yet. And then you have the hundreds and hundreds of tracks and games that but hasn't been released that is just waiting to be resampled you know yeah or released as it is as it is we also do that sometimes just release a jam as it is if it's if it's good enough you know of course yeah and i can just go that that looking through the cosmos solo library of uh, releases it's for me it's always a gold mine i mean What? it's almost always a gold mine I mean, well, uh, so so I, I we aim to please. I don't know. You, I you aim so, to please. <laughs> we very aim very to humble, uh, put. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't know how much we aim to please. I think we just. I think we just kind of. You aim to cheese. Aim to cheese. <laughs> no, I think we just kind of do whatever we want to do and then see how it fits with something. Okay. I yeah. think a lot of the free jazz we're doing or something, people cannot. People don't want to listen to it. You know, because free jazz is such an, uh, uh, a weird genre, and, and people uh, don't get it. I think a lot of it, like the mainstream people do not get Peter Butchman or you know something like that crazy saxophone playing or whatever. You know, but but it's okay. I mean, you you just have to do what you feel like doing, and then eventually somebody will hopefully uh, like it yeah. or not. But it doesn't matter because we release it anyhow. So it will be there for future generations to partake in crazy free jazz or drone music or whatever, you know? <laughs> of course, that's, that's uh, always great to <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. have these releases available and also the concerts, uh, also always great. So we started out also, Emil, yeah? talking about your um, inspiration coming from uh, a lot of the movies. Yeah, yeah. And, and can you name one movie in particular that inspired you you want me to name one movie that inspired me yes in terms of what in terms of everything in terms of, yeah 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 but you see you know like, i mean you can watch a movie like notting hill with julia roberts and hugh grant that inspires you to be a good yeah, person yeah but it has to be but you can also special. what it has to be something special i think Notting Hill is a special movie. I mean, I, it's not the one I would choose, but Notting Hill is a beautiful movie about friendship and love and romance. You know, it's inspiring. But in in terms of in terms of sound design or in terms of my work, I wouldn't maybe say Notting Hill. Mm. You know, but but in terms of sound design and and storytelling, I remember it was on the same it was on the same night I saw uh, Element of Crime by Lars von Trier on a VHS tape, his debut movie from uh, 84. And I saw Lost Highway by David Lynch the same day yeah. on two different VHS tapes. And that was uh, really inspiring. And that was when I I felt like I need to do something creative with myself. Right. That, that, so, so those two were, were a big part of, of the aesthetics and the storytelling. And But but I, I'm hugely inspired by a lot of movies, you know. Uh, so, so it's a bit hard to pick one depending on what the inspiration should be, hmm. I guess. <laughs> of course, of course. I, I, I haven't seen... Uh, the But shout out to Hugh Grant, you know. Hugh Grant? Shout out to Hugh Grant, the rom-com guru of the 90s. Yeah, yes. Hugh Grant, Hugh Grant, what a, what a guy. So, <laughs> what a guy. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, maybe an, an exempt. But I... I, I i definitely uh, was also inspired a lot by uh, Lost Highway when I saw it. it yeah, hit me yeah. A lot like the um, just the, the the vibe. Of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like sense of 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 storytelling by combining elements that shouldn't fit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That shouldn't fit together. Yeah. And, and yeah, the then, contrast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but still, they do in some way. And you are also working on uh, on on, on uh, film soundtracks as well. Yes, yes, yes. I have been working on some film soundtracks. I mean, like mainly, I've been working on film soundtracks for my own movies, 
which is easy because you don't have to de de you don't have to argue with the director because that's myself. So that's easy. But I have also recently I did a, a soundtrack for a feature length documentary about the Danish national team of homeless football that goes down to the world championship in uh, in football in homeless football. And I did the soundtrack for that um, uh, with a, a project called uh, Synth Mountain. And we wanted to do this soundtrack that was kind of Vangelis meets football. But in a way, you know, that, that was our, our sentence, but I don't know how much it fits. But we wanted to use a lot of synthesizers and a lot of only synthesizers, actually, you know, to do this epic soundtrack to football, homeless people playing football. And, and and that turned out really well, and I think it premieres on Saturday in Copenhagen. Okay, yeah. okay. that's something to look out for. Yeah, if you're there, in some museum somewhere. So yeah, I have been working a lot with soundtracks, and 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 it depends on how you look at soundtracks. I mean, if you have a video and you put sound on it, I guess it's a soundtrack. But I haven't made a lot of, I haven't made a lot of soundtracks to to big movies or anything. I'm st still still just exploring uh, the, the the concept of soundtracks you know yeah i would love to do more soundtracks uh, to to movies but but it's also hard sometimes working with the director yeah because if you have made something you think is completely beautiful and and epic and he says like nah that's not so good try something different then i would Yeah, then it's just hard to know where you go from there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because then you have to reinvent the entire idea and all that. So it's a bit, it's a, bit, it's a fragile, it's a fragile state. Right. I think. Cool. So Emil, we are unfortunately running out of time mm? because we have uh, music going on also. So I just want to play out with yeah. a track from yeah. a, a film you're doing at the at the moment. Or in is the it the Ghost Music for Wales? It is the Ghost Music for Wales. It is not a film. It was meant to be a musical taking place in Köln. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was meant to be a musical. Uh, and uh, me and uh, Janina, who I work with on this uh, project, um, it was all about uh, making this. Aarhus in the back, good old days was a place where you would uh, f capture whales and make oil out of them. It was a, as a oilery or what it called. Yeah, yeah. So the whole story was about building a, a epic storyline about this whaling business in Aarhus, where they make oil out of whales. So that mm. was the idea okay. of it. Yeah. Cool. So I want to I want to thank you, Emil. For, yeah. uh, for joining us today. You're welcome. You're it welcome. was a uh, cozy time as always. <laughs> yeah. Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So, without further ado, I will also say thank you for all of you listening. And uh, we are going to play out with uh, music for. Whales. Ghost music for Ghost whales. Ghost music for whales. Oh, yes. Yeah. yes.